Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for what I believe is actually, arguably, the most important match preview of the season. And it is not even against a Premier League side, which I will say could actually be a massive blessing for Chelsea. Banana skin? Potentially. We beat Preston 4-0 in the FA Cup at the weekend to progress into the fourth round of the competition. By the time you guys see this, we'll know who we get in the fourth round, but I'm recording this prior to the draw. And it is Middlesbrough away at the Riverside Stadium, a Middlesbrough team managed by Michael Carrick. Many people thought they'd go up this season. They're banging the mid-table of the championship. And Chelsea here have an opportunity to put a foot into the final. The second leg is at Stamford Bridge. The other two teams we could have played are Liverpool and an informed Fulham. So Chelsea have lucked out here. We've lucked out by getting the lowest ranked team in the tournament and the second leg at Stamford Bridge. So with that being said, I want our team, our manager, Chelsea as an entity to grab this opportunity with both hands by the bollocks, as has been said many times in history. Are you allowed to say that anymore? I don't know. There's a lot of things you can and can't do, but I'm saying it anyway. Grab this game by the flipping nuts and deliver. Own it. Chelsea have got to make this final at Wembley. If we don't, it is a disaster. Maurizio Pochettino in a final in his first season at Chelsea. It could be defining. And I know that it isn't just this match at the Riverside Stadium that will basically identify if Chelsea will be there or not. We've got to do it over two legs. But realistically, and you're going to see the team I'm putting out today, it's a strong side. My Chelsea team to go to Middlesbrough is bloody strong. I'm going to say, I want to say good, but like I feel as though we need to win a few more games in a row and keep the momentum going until I'm like, we're a really good team. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I've gone with what is like a 4 2 3 1. But in typical Chelsea fashion, when it comes to like building a team, even those on TV on match days, they're like, I don't know if this is a 4-2-3-1, a 4-3-3, or some other weird and wonderful variant. But overall, I want to hype this game up because I think, in my mind, this is the biggest game of our season thus far. There's obviously games against your rivals, games against top teams in the Premier League. It is the Carabao Cup. But when it gets to this point, and when you look at where Chelsea are at right now, I don't want to hear anybody saying, don't really care about this. It's just the Carabao Cup. The Carabao Cup can act as a catalyst for teams to go on. And it's just simply that process of going to Wembley. I always caveat this at any given opportunity. I've played at Wembley twice and I'm not a professional footballer. It is daunting. It's scary, but brilliant all at the same time when you think about what the encompassment of football actually is. You play and you're a professional to have the opportunity to play in the biggest stadiums, to play in semi-finals, to play in finals in front of your fans, to lift a trophy, to have that medal that you never have to throw into the crowd like Mourinho does. You can keep it forever. And it is absolutely a highlight of any player's career, be it a Carabao Cup final, an FA Cup final, Champions League, World Cup, whatever it may be. And Chelsea have got players like Lorenzo Fernandes who have won the biggest of them all. And I want all of these players to understand here that even though this is the Carabao, yes, there might not be massive financial bonuses that will arrive into their bank accounts as a result of getting to this final or winning this competition. It's about making sure that you get that winning taste. And that is what this Carabao Cup is. It's a chance to lift the trophy in February to absolutely kick yourself on for the rest of the season, be that chasing a European spot, winning the league, whatever it may be. And best believe, Liverpool, who are probably the favourites, big favourites for this competition, they are not going to roll over and play a week inside and not take this seriously. So for Chelsea, we've got to do the same. And that obviously means going in with humility, respecting the fact that Middlesbrough have also made it to this point, And this could be defining for them as well. They're in the championship. They're in mid-table. There's only ever really two wins away from the playoffs if you're mid-table in the championship. It's so tight. So they're going to want this as well. They were good against Aston Villa. I had it on at the same time I was watching Chelsea beat Preston. And Middlesbrough looked good. It wasn't for a second half goal from Villa. They would have gone through. But I think Chelsea here... We couldn't have a better opportunity. So, with that being said, I've gone with a really strong team here. Really, really strong. I don't believe right now we should be resting players because it's the Carabao Cup. 
I am so firm in my belief here that this has to be a destroy Middlesbrough, give ourselves a cushion for that second leg game because we got Fulham at the weekend, yes, but like allow us, if we're going to rest players, to do it when it's already won. So go out there and smash them on Tuesday night. We begin with the goalkeeper. Petrovic is, of course, in goal. This guy, I say it in every match preview, he's doing well, you know. Even against Preston, there wasn't really much for him to do, but there were some commanding takes from his hands out the box, and how often have we seen pathetic, faffy punches from goalkeepers? And he did everything he needed to do really well. So Petrovic is my number one. We move into a back four, and the key thing here is competence in those positions. Middlesbrough, even if they're at home in a semi-final, they know the best thing to do against Chelsea is frustrate us by playing with a low block. So that's what I fully expect them to do. So Levi Colwell is at left back because we don't have anyone else fit. Chilwell's getting there, but I don't think he comes in for this. Gusto right back. Thiago Silva. Benoit Badi is shield if he's fit enough and ready to play. And Levi Colwell. This could also be very much a Disassi Silva, but... Disassi, I was happy with him at the start of the season. And there's just some signs maybe that he might not be as good as I thought he was. In my head, I'm kind of umming an R in. Could be Alfie Gilchrist as well, by the way. Because I think he's more than capable of delivering for us. But that's the back four I've gone for. And I think as of right now, that could be the strongest back four we've got. Thiago Silva just proved to me. I would have said Disassi was in there. But that goal that Thiago Silva scored, if you see the leap of how high this guy gets to put that ball beyond the Preston goalie, he heads that with so much power. It's unbelievable. And as much as I was on the verge, not writing him off, but being like, yeah, we need to probably like slowly ease him out the team. I'm very much in a position now where I'm like, look, Chels, keep this guy around for as long as you possibly can. I want to see Thiago Silva reach 40 and score another goal for Chelsea Football Club. That is my back four. Gusto at right back. I think this could be a big moment for him. And when you see who I've got on the right going forward, I think there's a really good partnership there that could well be built. We move into the midfield. I'm going to line it up here as a three, just as the easiest way for me to kind of move from talking about the midfield into the attack. Caicedo, Gallagher and Palmer would have played Enzo Fernandez. And I just want to clarify this here. I was wrong in the six things we learned. I know I did give a green box to Enzo, but I don't think I praised his performance enough. When I went back and looked through the numbers, I was very much stuck in my own head from that first half where I saw him misplace some of the long balls. I think he got like seven out of 12. And I just kind of held on to that first half where I just saw a load of balls that were just awful. Saw a couple of good ones too. Enzo's numbers were good. I'm not saying that I thought he was excellent, but I'm, I do say that I take back the he was rubbish, he wasn't very good. I want so much more from him, though. And I think because of that recovery from the hernia, I would rest him for this game because Gallagher can come back in. Caicedo, Gallagher, Palmer. You've got a bit of everything in there. You've got Caicedo to hopefully protect that back four wall and act as like a wall within itself. Connor Gallagher for the industry, the run-in, the getting forward. Cole Palmer. He's absolutely magnificent. This guy is, in my opinion, the best player at Chelsea right now. Not just because of form. Yes, he's still young. Maybe a bit of naivety with the finish against Preston. But, like, come on. Gets an assist for Silva. Even when he's not playing that well, he still delivers. And at the end of the day, Chelsea are playing a numbers game right now. We need points. We need goals. And we need to not concede them. These are all statistics in football that we need to improve on. Cole Palmer could be massive for us. I think he'll be the match winner. And we move into a front three. Now, Armando Broya, other than the goal the other day, wasn't that impressed, but it is a brilliant header. I think that is going to be enough to allow him to keep the place. Obviously, with Christopher Nkunku, you'd want him to be in there, but he had a hip injury, which meant he was taken out of the team to play precedent out of the squad. The injury, if you didn't see the news video on Monday, or earlier today, depending on when I upload this, Nkunku is going to be back for the second leg, could be ready for Fulham. The issue is it was, well, a lot of people were scaremongering and it was more precautionary rather than it's a three-week absence, he's injured, blah, blah, blah. So, Broly is the attacker. Mudrik on the left, Madueki on the right. I think with Sterling, I think I was very surprised that he got man of the match in the Preston game. I don't think he was the best player on the pitch at all. 
but he did get it, scored a wonderful free kick. With Raheem Sterling, I think at the moment, you've got to keep Mudrik in there because I do think he's getting better and better and better. Even in that game against Preston, I thought the way that he was fighting and working in the final third was excellent. The movement was good. And what he's attempting to do, he's got a confidence about him. Noni Madweki is in great form. And I think when you play the game against Preston, which even though Chelsea dominated it, you've also got to think it's only a couple of days ago. So Nonny comes back into the starting eleven. I thought he looked bright when he came on, but I will say this about Nonny. When he did come on against Preston, I feel as though he was trying to prove a point to Pochettino a bit too much. I think he was maybe trying to do too much to be like, well, yeah, I kind of deserve to play. And now just because Raheem scored that hat trick, I, I still deserve to play. And I think Nonny maybe was a bit selfish in that little cameo. But I would absolutely give him the start for this game here against Borough. And then you've got Sterling in the Premier League game at the weekend if you just want to keep alternating them. At the moment, Chelsea are in a good little trend, an upward curve, you could say. We're winning football matches. We're starting to score goals. And you've got to expect that we can go to Middlesbrough and do the same. I think if we play a strong side like this one here, you never know. They, they might play the best game of their lives. This could be their best performance of the season, Borough, I mean. And they could make things really difficult for us. It's a bloody long journey to go all the way to the Riverside Stadium. Middlesbrough is not close to Stamford Bridge, for those of you that are unaware of the geography of the United Kingdom. However, I think Chelsea will have enough here. I think it could be tough. But I'm going to go with a 2-0 Chelsea win in the first leg, which should be enough to see it done. And then go to Stamford Bridge and hopefully not capitulate and have a nightmare disaster in front of our own fans, make it to a final. So, Cole Palmer's going to score. I also think Amanda is going to get one as well. That's my prediction. Let me know yours. Let me know your starting 11 in the comments down below. This is massive. It really is. I hopefully gave it a bit of a hype and a build-up at the beginning of this video, but if you're one of those people right now that doesn't want the Carabao Cup, thinks it's annoying, doesn't care about it, You've got to look at it a bit differently. This is a massive opportunity for Chelsea. A final in February is the stuff of dreams. And I think Pochettino's boys are going to do it. Come on, you Blues.